Hello EBS Owls and greetings from school. Uh, it's been a while since I've checked in with you all, um, but believe me when I say I've been thinking about you a lot and that I've been missing you a lot as well. Um, the good news is that we all may get to see each other again pretty soon. The big news is that on Tuesday night, our school board voted to reopen the building in the fall. Um, they have opted to go with what we are referring to as our hybrid model. And when you boil it down, what it really means is that families will have a choice between brick and mortar, coming back to the building and being here for uh, a seven hour day, five days a week, or continuing to learn remotely from home. And that choice is up to each individual family. Um, what I wanna share with you today is that I, I know parents and students have preconceived notions of what school is like here in the building, as well as preconceived notions of what remote education is like, remote learning at, outside the building. Um, and I am here to tell you that all of those preconceived notions are wrong. Um, that school will look very different this fall than it has looked in the past, um, and that remote learning will look quite different uh, than it did this past spring. So um, I'm gonna do my best in this video um, very briefly to give you um, some sneak peeks of what each might look like. There'll be more information in the weeks ahead as more details roll out and as more of the work is done at the school to prepare some of these uh, pieces for our reopening. Um, but I do wanna give you some sense of what brick and mortar would look like or what remote learning would look like. Um, attached to this video is a link to a survey that has been sent out by our superintendent's office. Um, and it asks families to preliminarily make a decision about whether they want to learn in the building or at home. Um, it, it is not a commitment on your part, so this is not binding, this is not final. It's sort of a, a feeler of where families are at right now. So we have a sense of our numbers for planning purposes. So we will ask you again in a few weeks to make that decision, but for now, this is just a, a taking of the pulse and figuring out where families are at this juncture. So uh, sit tight, check out a couple clips I've got here for you, and um, then please respond to the brief survey. Though the setup of this classroom is not yet complete, this will give you some sense of what a socially distanced classroom will look like at the Enfield Village School. You'll note workstations positioned six feet apart, all facing in the same direction. You will also note the absence of zones within the room where typically we would have a circle sit area, communal workspaces. We more or less just have single occupancy workstations. There are still lots of colorful and stimulating activities, all of our typical learning materials. But yes, this classroom does look different than the classroom you are accustomed to seeing at the Enfield Village School. As previously mentioned, remote learning is going to look very different as well than what people became accustomed to this past spring. Every single teacher in the district is going to create their own Google Classroom. And every student in grades one through 12 will have their own one-to-one -one Chromebook. And that's true whether students are learning here at school or whether they're learning at home. Through Google Classroom, teachers can provide announcements, disseminate assignments and collect those assignments, Communicate and collaborate with other people, students with students, students with teachers, and provide information about grades as assignments are collected. Your students will have far more autonomy in their learning in this next round of remote learning. And there will be far less emailing. There will also be more direct instruction provided through pre-recorded and or live videos. In considering every aspect of our day, from student drop-off, to recess, to snack, to transitions, to bathrooms, to the dissemination and collection of assignments, decisions will need to be made. And those decisions are all going to fall along this continuum. I'm oversimplifying, but <clears throat> there are things that we could do to ensure total safety, health, and security. There are other things that we could do to make sure things were as normal and as typical as possible. And again, each of those decisions will be made somewhere along these lines. I wanna be very transparent and upfront with all of you 
um, and saying that I think this target right here in the middle, that perfect balance of security and comfort is a hard target to hit. I don't really believe that any pediatrician, any lawmaker, any politician knows exactly where this falls. So as, as we move forward as a building and I make decisions, I'm going to err on the side of caution. Now, I am quite confident that there are those who will um, feel that I'm leaning too far to this end of things, and others who will feel I'm leaning too far this way. And both parties will be right, because everyone has their own perspective on this. At the end of the day, we are all going to be asked to be flexible, to adapt, and to make certain sacrifices. I do that with the best of intentions and in looking out for your sons and your daughters. First and foremost, I need to make sure that people feel safe here in the building our students, our staff members, and members of our community. So I thank you for working with me on this and being on board for what promises to be a challenging but fulfilling school year. Thank you all very much. Who cares for you? We do. How much? So much. We'll talk to you again soon.